Apple just released watchOS 10.1 and it comes with the much anticipated double tap feature, name drop support, and more. So in this video, we're going to cover all of the new features and changes in the first major watchOS 10 update. And then after that, we'll discuss the battery life and if you should update or not. And as far as the size goes for this update, you can expect it to be around 300 megabytes. Of course, the size will vary depending on the watch that you're using and the version that you are coming from. But this was the size on my Apple Watch Ultra second generation. All right, so now what's new here in watchOS 10.1? And the first thing is name drop support. So we now finally have name drop support for the Apple Watch to transfer contact information. Now this feature is only compatible with the Series 7 or the Apple Watch SE 2 and newer. So with name drop, just like you can with the iPhones where you put two phones together and it transfers contact information, you can now do that with a watch with another watch. So Apple Watch to Apple Watch, or you can do Apple Apple Watch to iPhone. So if you hold up your iPhone to an Apple Watch or vice versa, you can transfer contact information that way. So the way that it works on the watch is a little bit different. So for this, you need to go into the contacts app. And once you're in here, just tap on your profile picture up in the top right hand corner. And then you'll see your picture in the background along with your phone number. And then you have a big share button. Now, if you want to change from sharing that phone number to maybe a second SIM that you have, you know, on your device or an email, you can just tap on that number and you can choose if you want to show an email address or another number. And then from here, all you need to do is tap on share and you can see you get a cool little animation now showing how name drop works. So I'm going to put my phone up next to the Apple watch and you'll see that we do now have that feature working. So it shows sharing contact and it shows right there on the Apple watch. And of course it shows on the iPhone as well, if that is a new contact. So there's another look at the animation that you will see. And if you're going to use this a lot, a quicker way to access that is to just add a complication to your watch face here. So if you go into edit and we go over to our complications, I could just set one of these to the contacts. So we're going to go down here and find contacts. There we go. We have contacts right there. And then you will see my card. So you do have favorites as well but my card is new now. So when you tap on my card and you go out of here and go back to your watch face, you will see your little profile picture there, the one that you have set up along with a quick and easy way to access the name drop feature. So now you just need to tap on that and it will go ahead right here where you can share your contacts with another person. Now keep in mind, you do need to be on watchOS 10.1 and also the other person that you're transferring, you know, contact information with also needs to be on either watchOS 10.1 or iOS 17. Point one and later. Now, the other big new feature in watchOS 10.1 is double tap. So this is pretty much the main feature that you bought the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 for, and it is finally here with this watchOS 10.1 update. So how this works is you just simply tap your index finger or multiple fingers to your thumb. That is the gesture, and that will perform a primary action in both applications and with notifications. So for example, if I just tap, I like using two fingers to that my thumb you know in the demonstration they just show one finger but i just find it more useful i don't know more comfortable i guess natural to do two fingers to my thumb but you can do one or two fingers you can even do like your middle finger instead of your index finger just tap like so and then that will invoke you can see if you're on just the watch face that will allow you to go through your smart stacks here so you can just easily browse through your different smart stacks by simply double tapping right here and going through them however i don't really find that super useful the biggest use case i found for this feature what i really like doing besides going through the smart stacks is actually responding to messages without ever having to touch my watch. Okay, so I just got a message saying, how are you? So now I can just simply double tap and take a look at this. It automatically invokes dictation. So now I'm able to say, you know, whatever I want to respond to that text with via voice. And once I'm done, I can just stop and I can double tap again and it will automatically send that message. So there you go. You can see it shows a little preview there and you can see here's what the message said. Of course, I was talking before I should have, but you get the point. It's really easy now with the double tap gesture to send a message back to somebody without ever having to touch your Apple Watch. I also found this feature very useful for playing and pausing music. So you can see I can go ahead and pause the music there. And you'll notice every time, by the way, you do see the little glyph icon up top to indicate that we are performing an action via double tap. And so now I have a phone call coming in and I could double tap and you can see it will answer that phone call. And now I double tap again and it will hang up 
that phone call. Very easy and very useful when your hands are full. And then if you head into the watch application, you'll see that we have a brand new section here called gestures. So if you go into gestures, this is where you can change what double tap does based on playback and smart stack. So you can change the functionality for those two specifically. So if you want to skip to the next song, instead of playing and pausing your music, you can set that right there. And also for smart stacks, if you only want to select a smart stack to see more information about it, you can do that instead of advancing to the next smart stack. But I like the default setup here personally. And by the way, if you're wondering why this double tap feature is only on the series nine and ultra two, Apple says it's because of the S nine chip and the faster neural engine inside. Those are the things that make this feature possible. And if you're wondering the specifics as to how Apple is able to detect when you're touching your fingers together, they said that they developed an algorithm that detects the unique signature of tiny wrist movements and changes in blood flow when the index finger and thumb are tapped together. And then another minor change on the watch application on your iPhone is that we now have updated images for the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the Apple Watch Series 9. Whereas before on watchOS 10, it showed the Series 8 and the Ultra 1. Now we do also have some bug fixes with watchOS 10.1. And the first one has to do with battery life because this update fixes the battery drain bug when you only update your iPhone or only update your Apple Watch and not both. So what I mean by that is if you update your Apple Watch to watchOS 10.1, but your iPhone is still on 17.0.3, you're gonna notice battery drain. But if you update both to 17.1 and watchOS 10.1, that is going to fix the battery drain bug. There's also a bug fix for the weather application. So if you were having issues with cities not syncing properly between your iPhone and your Apple Watch to display weather, that has been addressed here with watchOS 10.1. We also have a fix in the home application. So if we go down here, you can see that I have two different AC units here set up in my home app. Well, well, on watchOS 10, this was showing up as blank. It would not show the temperature for my different thermostats here. Well, that has been fixed in watchOS 10.1 because the whole climate section was just blank before on watchOS 10, but that has been fixed. And this update also fixes an issue where the scroll bar, like you see over there on the right-hand side, sometimes that would just show up unexpectedly and it would be visible when it's not supposed to be. So if you had that visual bug, that has also been patched. There's also a fix for a bug that caused elevation to be incorrect. So you can see mine shows plus 65 feet as my elevation, whereas sometimes before on watch OS 10 that would show an incorrect figure. There's also a bug fix for assistive touch. So if you use assistive touch, this addresses an issue that caused a white selection border to be unexpectedly displayed after turning off assistive touch. So if you had that visual bug, that has also been addressed. Now, as far as battery life goes, I didn't have the best experience with battery life on watchOS 10, but ever since updating to watchOS 10.1, I have noticed an improvement with battery life. So that is good news, especially on the Apple Watch Ultra 2. You could see here, I was last charged to 100% on Thursday at 12.14 a.m. It is now Friday at 5.40 p.m., and I'm just under 50% battery remaining, and that is without low power mode and with doing workouts and just normal usage. So battery life has been excellent, really no complaints, and I've not really seen any type of decline in battery life based on using the double tap gesture, which that was one of my biggest worries, but so far I've not noticed any type of negative impacts from using the double tap gesture. So now let's answer the question, should you update to watchOS 10.1 or not? And I would say that if you have an Apple Watch Series 9 or Ultra 2, this is an obvious must update. Like you're getting the main feature that Apple advertised for the new watches in double tap. So if you want access to double tap, which you probably do, go ahead and update to watchOS 10.1 right away. But even if you have an Apple Watch Series 8, an Apple Watch Ultra first gen, or pretty much any other Apple Watch, I still think it's worth it to update to 10.1 because you do get name drop support. Again, if you have the newer Apple Watches and you also have some much needed bug fixes and potentially even an increase in battery life like I saw on my Ultra 2 here. So I'd say it's worth it for all Apple Watch users to go ahead and update to watchOS 10.1. I really don't see any type of downside with this update. And if you're wondering what's coming next for the Apple Watch, we should see
see watchOS 10.2 at some point in November, potentially even in December. So if you don't update now, you're probably not going to get a major update for another month or more. However, we could see a watchOS 10.1.1 if you know some other bugs are found in the Apple Watch. That could be a subsequent update that comes after 10.1, but before 10.2. So that is watchOS 10.1, a pretty minor update if you're not on one of the newer Apple Watches, but it's still nice to see bug fixes and potentially battery drain fixed even for older Apple Watches. So if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have not checked out my iOS 17.1 video where I show all the new iPhone features in their latest software, I will leave that video linked in the description below and also up in the cards above. But if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more watchOS and iOS videos in the future. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.